so. No, so, no, so. I don't know nobody name so. So I said to myself, no. How are this? What is this? Let me get myself in here. I'm going to a place that two people just gave me the exact same direction of the place and no one after those two people know where I'm going. No one who is living in the community know who that person is. How is that possible? When you're in a particular area or a community for a period of time, normally more than oh, a year or so, at some point, people would start recognizing that you are living at this place, right? So how is it that somebody who is living in the community and it's such a community like that where they're so neatly close to each other have no idea who this person is how is that possible now the guy who was coming down the road i don't know if he was a policeman or what he was livid he was saying to, he was so upset with me because he was saying to myself where number? Give me number, me call it. I gave the guy the number. We were there ringing, ringing, ringing and no answer. And he was saying to me, what is my last name? People, I only know, I only knew the guy's first name. I don't know the guy's last name. Where am I going? Huh? Where may I go? I don't know this guy's last name. I have his address which I which looks like a mailing address. And I have a number that is not working. And I only have the guy's first name. Where the hell am I going? I make it even worse. No one in the community knows who this guy is. So <laughs> I'm like, I need a place to stay. At this point, it was about 4.30 because we've been there trying to find this place. And the guy was so upset with me because he was saying, how can you be going to a place and you don't know where? First of all, he was saying, where did you book this place? Where did you book? And he said, a matter of fact, is not the first time I hear people asking about this same guy. Give me his number. A matter of fact, I'm going to go to the police station right now. So I said, what the hell did Mark Cyber go on? So, I, at, this, at this point, I was, I was at the point of crying. My brother... <laughs> My brother was so confused because I, I don't I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand the feeling of being an experience or being in an environment where you don't know what to do. You don't know where you're going. And at that point, at that point I was just, I was just so confused because one, I didn't want to call my parents. I didn't want to call my parents because I just knew how they would flip. I didn't want to call anybody and tell them about it because I didn't want. And the funny thing is, it took nothing for me to just jump on a taxi and head to Mandeville and go back to my parents' house. I really could have done that, but I didn't want to do that. I just thought that it was a part of the experience. And yes, I wanted to continue my travel. I didn't, know, I didn't want anything to stop me from continuing my travels. So I just 
I was just there trying to figure out what to do next because I was not getting this guy. It was not going to 4 o'clock in the evening, going into 5 o'clock and then you start seeing the sun coming down and all of these things. And I was saying to myself, Yara, you really need to come up with a plan because no one knows where you're going. No one knows who this person is. So he was he took my number he took the name of the of the the website which i got the booking from and he was saying that he went and he said yeah you listen you cannot come into a, you cannot come into a community like this because it's not a safe place for you apart a matter of fact the area is not good not a good area you cannot come into an area like this and don't know where you're going that's what the guy and if this guy who is living there is telling me this why the hell am i what am i doing there right so he said listen to me the best thing you need to do right now is just jump on a taxi head back to Montego Bay and try finding a, a, a place there so right and I am just in I'm in the car he he actually brought me down the hill because he was saying listen to me you need to go back to Montego Bay you need to go back to the town he was just so upset because he was saying that I don't know if he thought I was stupid or what, but he was just so upset with me and he was saying to my saying to me, Go go up on the taxi, go up on the taxi, right? He was just forcing me to say, go on the taxi. But you know what? I did not resist because I'm saying to myself, if this guy is living in the community and he is telling me that this is not a safe area and I need to go back to the town. I can't resist. I can't. I really cannot resist. So, I did that. I did just that. I went on a taxi, and while I was in the taxi, I was just saying that. But the taxi guy, I was, I was see the taxi guy there. When I was going back in the other taxi, the guy who brought me up was in. He was in the shop, parked. Oh, he was parked outside, and he was in the shop. And I was saying, see the, you don't know the guy? He, he's the one that told me that you know where, where the person is. And I said, listen to me. Go back to the town. Go back to the town. And I was like, ah. I wasn't even worried about the money. Because I was saying to myself, I knew I could get it back somehow. But I, I just felt... I, I don't know I was just so disappointed so I went back to to the to the area and this guy went directly to the to the police station directly to the police station and when he came out the taxi man said to me you know the guy and I was like no and he was said but he might behave like you know that together or something or you know him from somewhere I said no I know they don't know this guy but he was just so upset. When I went back to the town, taxi man said to me, I need to talk to you. Put your brother on one side, I need to talk to you about something. And he said, Honestly, I think you have been scammed. Honestly, I think you have been scammed.